Unfortunately, NBA 2K kind of breeds toxicity, kind of like Call of Duty Modern Warfare lobbies. You can walk around a public gym and challenge random people to pick up games. Usually the loser will just end up screaming into the mic all kinds of heinous things that are totally unnecessary. I mean, games are competitive and trash talk is inevitable, but this game for some reason brings out the worst in people. Even in the early days, we can see it getting the best of speed. One y'all go on this stream right now and say TJ, use a b <laughs> Oh my god! He spent the summer of 2020 grinding the game and trying to build up his viewership. He was averaging around 20 viewers and would eventually amass 1,000 subscribers, still keeping that positive energy, interacting with his chat, and getting to know them. He would only get toxic when other people from the community would come into his stream and try to mess with him. They would call him names and challenge him to games that he didn't want to play. Around this time, he came up with a winning strategy for growth on YouTube. He would do a two hour live stream, then post a six to 10 minute clip of the stream as a YouTube video with a better title, only posting the ones labeled funny reaction because those got the best views. They were basically just the buildup of him freaking out and what caused the freak out. This was a great growth strategy for him and he stayed consistent with this throughout summer of 2020. The Rage Highlight videos were becoming a staple part of his brand and was slowly becoming the thing that people wanted to see the most from him. He streamed and uploaded every single day for months without fail. In October 2020, he got banned from streaming because YouTube thought he was 12 and you need to be 13 to stream. So basically, I, I can't stream no more, y'all, for a little minute, y'all, because of that last live stream, y'all, so I would not be streaming no more. This would be the first of many, many videos where he tells his chat that he can't stream anymore. The ban would only last one day, and he would be back the next day because YouTube was obviously in the wrong. NBA 2K21 came out, and the community hated it. Aiden Ross was a big part of the game's top players leaving and moving on to different things. There was still a demand out there for 2K21 content. Plus, Speed would play as a unique position, a post scorer. Most content creators didn't play as this position. He figured out a way to be different, and that's what got him attention. 